Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be organizing Batman The Dark Knight Returns The Game, the Kickstarter edition designed by Daryl Andrews, Morgan Duntanville, and published by Cryptozoic Entertainment. This is a fully sleeved deluxe edition of the game that's all organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible, to have no lid lifts so that everything fits into these two boxes. That includes the miniatures, the cards, the standees, everything will be in these two boxes, organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible, logically, and to keep everything protected. If you have any any questions about anything you see here, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you would like any of the items that we talk about in this video, please look in the description of the video. There will be links there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. Let's get started organizing the deluxe Kickstarter edition of Batman The Dark Knight Returns The Game. First off, let's look at the miniatures box. So we've got two large boxes in here and we'll just slide out the miniatures box like so. And we'll open it up here with this nice magnetic clasp. We've only made one major modification to our miniatures box here, and that has to do with the corner. Now the corner has a bit of plastic trim, so it becomes a nice lid that you can pull off as opposed to something that's a bit of a nuisance. This organizer is extremely tight in here, but it does keep things nice and protected and stops all the wiggle room. So we'll just lift off that bottom here and then it'll come off like so. As you can see, the insert may pop off as well. So it's easy to just push that back in, but it's really hard if you don't clip that to actually go in and pull off that lid. It can get kind of annoying and can damage your sides of your box here. You'll take out the miniatures that you'll need for each specific mission, which usually includes Batman, your allies, your vehicles, and then the current boss that you're fighting. I really like these miniatures, especially the way that the bases here indicate which action space that you're on. It works extremely well. So we'll put those miniatures back inside. We'll return our plastic lid and make sure to get those corners because it is a pretty snug fit in here. And we'll close up that magnetic clasp like so. So that's the miniatures box with no lid lift, and you can use these in place of the standees that come in the core game. And that brings us to the core game box. As I mentioned before, there's going to be no lid lift here, and similar to the other one, we'll first lift off that magnetic clasp. Drapes on top, nice and flat, are all of the rule books to the game. This is the core game rule book and book one rules. This will basically have your introductory scenario and tell you all about the different components in the game and some hints on how to organize and store your things based on the numbers that are present on the components. We'll move the core game rules to the side, followed by our book two rules, which will help you with that second mission, three and four, and lastly, our standalone mission rulebook and the versus mode. The last thing that's in here is a component that you're probably never going to use. It's a folder that's supposed to be used to save your status between missions. We found that a plastic bag and a picture works perfectly, and I would recommend that over using this component. You can actually remove this from the box. You'll never miss it, honestly. Underneath the paper components, we have the game board, and this has a really cool feature that it's a dry erase. Now, you can take a picture of the board state at the end of each of your missions, or you could just write down where your different mutants, cops, etc. are, and all your different status symbols. Now, beware of this. You could potentially have some smudging that happens when you're closing the board. Maybe the two sides touch each other, but there is no face on the outside here, so it's not going to get smudged by any of the paper components or the bags underneath that we'll talk about in a second. Your mileage may vary on how you use the board to save your different things, but I prefer the the camera method as you're going to need to erase them at the start of each game anyway. And that brings us to the meat of the container, all of the components required in order to play the different missions of Batman The Dark Knight Returns. First, let's talk about this bottom right organizer here that stores all of our every game components. These are stored in art box organizers that you can get the Dollar Tree. Once again, links in the description below for these. They come in a variety of colors. Let's take a look inside of the organizer at the every game components, starting off with our different adversary markers for the mutants, the press, and the cops. We've got our bat signals for a variety of things, and then our combat dice for the cops and the mutants. We have our markers here that show where those different adversaries are gonna be populated, separated into ones and twos. You'll need eight of each of them. And lastly, you'll have a variety of components up here. That upper left corner has the components for the Batman standee, your grit, health, and insanity markers, your round marker, and your doomsday marker. So you'll need these every game, make sure to populate the board with them. And those are your every game components, put those in an area within reach of you. To the left of that, we have our dry erase marker that you'll need every game as well. And your current set of cards. Now this is currently saved after mission one, and it has our cooldown cards as well as our action cards that are all S marked. So on the bottom of most of your components here, you're going to have numbers that tell you what missions they're specifically from. The cooldown card you'll use in every mission, but in mission one and two, you'll use this side of the cooldown card. The other cards in here are the cards that you've earned throughout the game. These can be the missions that you've completed, the missions that you're still working on, as well as your different vehicles and allies, etc. 
your hand of cards that you finished with, and then all of your starter cards marked once again by that S in this bottom corner. A simple plastic bag will do for storing them from game to game, and you'll just pull it out and put them on their appropriate spaces as matched by your save game state picture you've taken. Underneath that, you'll have your secret envelope that you'll open at the end of book four, and you'll notice that it's in a plastic bag here because when the cards are sleeved, it does not fit back into that small little black folder. Now's a great time to talk about the sleeves we use for the game. We use the Ultra Pro Pro Mat Deck Protector Sleeves, standard sized. I really like the matte finish on these, they reduce the glare, and they're really nice to shuffle. If you're looking for any of these, once again, take a look in the links in the description of the video. Up next, you have your dice bag that has all of your battering dice inside. Now these battering dice, you're gonna start off with these blue ones, but you can upgrade into the other colored ones by completing missions throughout the game. We then have our large tarot sized cards here in this large plastic bag. Now this is going to have your current mission on the top here. These are gonna include your story cards as well as your round references. We use the Arcane Tin Min board game sleeves, tarot sized for all of these large tarot sized cards. Once again, they have a nice non-glare matte finish. We've got all of your riot markers for the game. You'll need these for every single game, and if you need to put one on the board and you can't, you'll lose. In this upper left corner, we have all of our different versus mode components. These include these fire tokens, this little standee, these bridge close tokens, and then all of the cards. Now, whenever you are organizing your components here, you can tell which goes to which based on this little symbol in this bottom corner. It's got this verse symbol on here, and you can find all of those components and put them into a single bag, and that'll just stay in that upper left corner until you're deciding to play that versus mode. Generally, you'll just leave the cards that you're not using in the organizer here. And speaking of cards, we have all of our different mission cards separated by these little numbers. Once again, this is mission one. You're going to be adding cards from these from campaign mission to campaign mission. This deck is going to grow as you play, so you need to keep that in mind that these card sizes will fluctuate, and you may need to make small modifications to our organization method the more that you play through your actual campaign. And that brings us to our other decks for mission two, mission three, and mission four. The last four bags here are all the components for the specific missions, including standees, dice, and assorted tokens that you'll need to play those missions. Once again, you don't necessarily need to use the standees if you're employing the miniatures, but they're here so that you have that option. Now, all of the tokens are marked with that little symbol that shows which mission that they belong to. However, all of the dice are not. So I'll go through all of the non-marked components and tell you which mission they belong with. So Two-Face has his two different Two-Face dice here. Make sure to include that with mission one. Book two is going to have two of these gray dice that you can earn from one of the mission cards, as well as two of the robin dice, one that is blue and one that is black. And then you'll have the three red dice here for the mutant. For mission three, you'll have one additional red robin die that you can potentially unlock, and then your four joker dice like so. And that brings us to our last book that's going to have your Superman dice, your Green Arrow dice, and lastly, your dark gray die that you can unlock during a mission. It's a little bit darker than the two grays found in book two. And that's everything in your core box for Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Let's go ahead and pack it up. First, we'll start off with all of the cards for the different books and put them in the upper right section. And we'll also make sure we put all of our versus components in that upper left section. We'll put our art box organizer in this bottom right section, a dry erase pen, and then your after book four secret cards. We'll then place our current and starting cards here, all of our battering dice, all of the non-card components for the four different missions, your riot tokens, and then your large tarot sized cards. We'll put our game board on top of that, all of our rule books in our large envelope, and that is organizing Batman The Dark Knight Returns the game. I'll give you another shot here just to show that there is no lid lift in this organization system, and I hope that it helps you get gameplay started as soon as possible and get things organized quickly. The last step is to put that miniatures box under that core game box and slide them into their large sleeve. And that is organizing the entirety of Batman The Dark Knight Returns, the game. Once again, if you have any questions about anything you saw here, please let me know down in the comments below. How do you organize your copy of Batman The Dark Knight Returns, the game? Do you employ the insert that came with the game? Did you sleeve your cards? Did you get the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition? Or did you just go for the retail version? Are you a fan of Batman or The Dark Knight Returns specifically? I'd love to hear what you think. Have an excellent time being the world's greatest detective, and thank you so much for watching Side Game Strong.